president <laughs> of RFA, Ed Soares. And of course, uh, most folks know you as, as a longtime mixed martial arts manager, manager to the stars. My God, Leota Machida, Anderson Silva, uh, a boatload of other guys. But now you're kind of entering a, a, a new field for you. And I know you're very excited about it. Very excited. I'm, I'm entering a new chapter in uh, my career and uh, real excited to, to be back into the promotion business. You know, uh, when I started off my career, I, I promoted events and nightclubs and uh, managed some bands. So it, all that experience has helped me transition over and I'm excited to get back into the promoter seat. It's definitely a new challenge. You know, um, I uh, came on board with the RFA uh, just almost about, about a year ago. Um, became the president. Once I became the president, we, we you know, locked in a television deal. Um, 2013, we're going to be doing seven events live on Access TV. And uh, 2014, we're scheduled to do about 10 to 12. So I'm very excited about the future of the RFA and where we're taking it. This is an organization that I find very interesting because you've come out and said, listen, we are not trying to compete with the 800-pound gorilla in the UFC. You guys are working together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in, in eight shows, we've done eight shows so far. Uh, we've gotten six uh, of fighters that have fought in the RFA to the UFC. So what I've, you know, as soon as I came on board, one of the things I decided to do is I wanted to become the developmental organization for the UFC. And that's what we've been able to do. Almost so, in unofficial minor leagues. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you know a lot of people I compare to NFL, I, I look at the UFC is more like the NFL. Mm -hmm. Bellator is more like the CFL. And what the RFA, the, the space we're, we're going to fill and which we are filling is the, the college football. Mm -hmm. So we're the college football of mixed martial arts. I know you could list off like 10 guys, yeah. but, but give me one or two guys that we should be looking out for. One of them being Pedro Munoz, who's a 135 pounder. I mean, I think he's uh, definitely a top prospect uh, you know, if he gets through and wins this title fight against Jeff Kern, a very seasoned veteran, I think, you know, the UFC is going to have uh, their eyes on him. And they already are looking at him. And I think with a good performance next Friday night, he could uh, potentially uh, earn a shot up at the UFC. The other one is uh, Steve Mako. He's a, he's a heavyweight. He's an Olympian, uh, two-time All-American national champ. And, and he's going to be fighting next Friday night. He's 2-0 and right now. Um, very, very good on the ground. He's a judo black belt. And I think those are two big prospects that are fighting next week that I think uh, people will definitely see in the UFC. And you've got a show coming up here uh, in, uh, that's going to be held over at the StubHub Center in Carson. That's right. It's going to be uh, next Friday, August 16th at the StubHub Center. I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited <laughs> You know, to, to be able to come back yeah. and uh, uh, bring a, a, a mixed martial arts event of this caliber to, to pretty much my hometown. You know, I was born and raised here in the South Bay and uh, I'm very proud to be able to bring a, a, an event back to my hometown and also using this uh, uh, event to be able to promote all the talent that's around the South Bay because, I've, I, you know, this, uh, this city, you know, it's where it all started, man. You know, the Gracie started the UFC and it all started here in Torrance. So it's real nice to be able to bring it back. I have to admit my ignorance here because Ed, you are absolutely 100% fluent in Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, you manage all these Brazilian superstars. Yeah. I, I thought for a long time, Ed Soares is, has got to be from Brazil. He's got to be from Rio or someplace like that. No, yeah. actually, my God, you, you've, you've been in the South Bay your entire life. Yeah, my whole life. And I was born in Inglewood, California. I was born in, there and r was raised in Redondo. Went to Washington Elementary, Adams Junior High. Went to Redondo and Miracosta High School. My first job was at ET Surfboards, <laughs> so go. it's uh, it's you know I've been you know I'm very proud uh, proud to be from the South Bay, and and I can tell you that now for as much traveling as I do, yeah. for people that don't realize it, we live in the best place in the world, man. We've got to of course talk about Anderson Silva, a shocking loss, a, a huge upset loss. Even though a lot of pros were kind of picking Weidman to possibly win that fight, I don't think anybody saw the outcome, the way that it came out, uh, uh, via a knockout loss. Boy, that was, that was shocking. When you saw that, what emotions were you feeling? Um, I, was, I was in shock. I was a, a little bit numb. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's crazy because so many people were in shock. I mean, even Herb Dean, the, the, the referee, he, he was even, uh, he even thought Anderson was kidding. No, everybody was in disbelief. So for the referee of the event to sit, sit there and think that you were messing around at first that you got knocked out, just shows you the caliber of, of an athlete that Anderson is. But, you know, that's the wonderful thing about this sport is that anything can happen at any time. There is no sure thing. 
and Anderson, you know, has been a champion now for almost seven years. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't his night. You talk about him being a champion for seven years. Uh, a lot of p folks have postulated that Anderson Silva was a little bit tired of being a champion. Do you think that's a fair criticism? Um, I don't necessarily know if he was uh, tired of being a champion. I know I, he mentioned that there's a lot of pressure being a champ. Of course. I mean, one of the things my business partner told him when we had dinner after after the fight is he said, you know, Anderson, you went from being a hunter to being the hunted. And I think, you know, once you're a champion for that long, it's real hard to say or real easy to say, oh, I, I, I wouldn't be this way or I wouldn't be that way. But I, I think he might have got to the point where he forgot what it was like not to be champion. But uh, one thing I know is that everything happens for a reason. I still believe Anderson Silva is the best fighter on the planet. And I believe that uh, by the end of this year, he's going to have that belt right, wrapped right around his waist again where it belongs. Talk to me about the emotional state, the mental state of Anderson Silva today. I've seen a big change in his mental state. I think he, he woke up and snapped out of a lot of things. And, uh, and I think, uh, I hate to say it, I think this might have been a good thing. You, hmm. know, I, you know, it was horrible to see a guy that, he's not only my client, but he, he, he's my, my friend, my family. And uh, to, to see him knocked out on the canvas bothered me a lot, but I, I know what he's capable of doing, and I know he'll be back on top again. I can't get over this super fight because it's just so tantalizing. Right. Anderson Silva, John Jones, uh, you and I have talked about this before, but how do you think that fight might play out? And, and you might give a surprising answer here. Well, it's, it's, you know, what I believe, I believe Anderson Silva is the best fighter on the planet, period. Any weight class, I think you could put Anderson Silva against any fighter in any weight class, and I think... Just go old school they, pride no, style? Well, yeah, you could go old school pride, but I believe that he has a bigger danger to any fighter he faces than any fighter has towards him. That's an interesting way that, of putting that, it. That, that's what I believe. Can he be beat? Of course he can yeah. be beat. Anybody can be beat. But you put him against any fighter in any weight class, and I think he has a bigger chance of beating them than they do beating him. So what about John Jones? I think he'll beat him. You do? I do think Anderson can beat John Jones. Not taking anything away from John Jones. John's an incredible athlete, Incredi incredible fighter. Incredible athlete, but he doesn't have the experience, and I think that a well-trained Anderson Silva would beat John Jones.